Vlogmas day two. So I get many questions from you guys if I can go over Dr. Bronner's soap and talk about Castile soap. So Castile soap uh, is essentially a soap traditionally made with olive oil. Soap in its most basic sense is nothing more than taking a neutral fat, whether that be animal fat or plant fat, as in the case of Castile soap, it's olive oil as the plant fat, and boiling it with a caustic alkali, like sodium hydroxide or some other base. Then there can be the addition of other components. The oils used in Dr. Bronner's are not exclusively olive oil. Uh, olive oil. They also include coconut oil and the base is potassium hydroxide rather than sodium hydroxide. It tends to make, um, I believe, a softer soap. But regardless of the soap, the problem with soaps, regardless of the pH or how, quote, gentle it is, is that soaps uh, dissolve part of the lipid component of the skin barrier, and in doing so, our, uh, an enzyme called serine proteases in our skin barrier is activated and this results in cleavage of uh, the um, cleavage and disruption and lysis of the corneocytes or the skin cells. Interestingly enough, contrary to popular belief, soap is more irritating on the skin barrier than plain alcohol. I get many questions about is alcohol bad in skincare products and while alcohol can be drying, particularly in alcohol toners where it's like the main ingredient, while alcohol, alcohols can be very drying, they don't dissolve the lipid barrier and result in this activation of serine proteases like soaps do. Alcohols really just kind of dry out the stratum corneum, the top layer of the skin cells. They don't, they don't dissolve and disrupt the barrier to the same extent and actually are less, less irritating to the skin barrier, less damaging to the skin barrier than so. Um, you know, there's an epidemic of sensitive skin, dry skin, hyper irritable skin. Rates of self-reported sensitive skin continue to increase upwards of you know, greater than 50% of the population will endorse, quote, sensitive skin. It's thought to be due largely to aggressive bathing habits, overuse of soap. We're a very soap-centric society. I'll put some references down below for this. Um, so all in all, you know, Dr. Bronner's is not strikingly unique in comparison to other soaps. I think what sets Dr. Bronner's apart and the appeal to a lot of you guys perhaps out there is that because it is vegetable oil derived it's you know obviously going to be vegan you guys want to know my thoughts on castile soap i don't think it's any better than any other soap equally this castile soap is equally damaging to the skin barrier as any other soap dr bronner soaps are very alkaline they recommend diluting them on the website if you're going to use them for bathing and they have uh, some recommended dilutions. Regardless, soap is, is irritating and disrupts the skin barrier. Okay, so Dr. Bronner's Castile soap, you know, it doesn't, it's no, it's no better than any other soap as far as it's still going to, it's still going to break up the skin barrier, activate those serine proteases and potentially cause problems. The, the problem that I have with Dr. Bronner's is they all contain fragrance, all right? Um, almond oil, almond fragrance, lavender oil. People, say, people always ask me, like, I thought natural fragrances were okay. Natural fragrances and, 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 and fruit extracts and plant extracts, they still can cause many problems for people. They contain compounds like geraniol um, and eugenol, which are fragrance molecules that people people can be easily irritated and, and, and sensitized to. So just because it's natural does not make it safe. Lavender oil in particular can be very problematic. You know, many of you will comment and query, well, if essential oil, if you're saying essential oils are so bad, why is it that so many people claim that they've helped them? And here's the thing, you guys have to understand, 
as a as a physician, my bias is only to see problems. <laughs> when things go well, people don't go to the doctor. When things go well, they don't show up, you know, to referral centers, and they're not subsequently entered in, you know, clinical trials. So I'm not saying that it's not possible that certain essential oils have not helped people. I just am cautioning you guys that I see a lot of problems to essential oils, and just because they're natural does not make them safe and they can actually be quite dangerous. And someone will comment, you know, do your research, um, but there's a lot of misinformation out there on, on blogs and, and websites, and it's hard to really tease out what's legitimate information and what's not. You know, there are some studies that topical application of essential peppermint oil has been helpful in chronic itch, a very, very small study. But peppermint oil can also be, can also be irritating and you can develop allergies to it. Um, so that goes with all of the essential oils. It'd be great if Dr. Bronner made one that did not have that did not have essential oils in it. Uh, then I would be more more supportive of the Dr. Bronner soap. Dr. S Dr. Bronner also makes a bar soap. These definitely tend to be more on the basic side of of the pH range. Very drying. Don't be misled into thinking that because this is an all-natural bar soap that uh, it's going to be any less irritating to your skin. However, Kirk's makes a Castile bar soap that is coconut oil derived with no added fragrance. This will still be very drying on the skin barrier and, and irritating, but it is, it is a better choice than the Dr. Bronner's one because it is free of essential oils. Minimal ingredients which is great. And it likewise is cruelty-free and vegan. We're at a different Whole Foods and it's like very quiet in here. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like cathedral quiet. Happy Vlogmas Day 2. <laughs> what did you get there, black and white? I thought I'd do something different and just not have a hot coffee today. Yeah. It's just almond milk, coconut cream, and coffee. You have to let it let you know how it is. I got oatmeal, but I also dumped in two platanos. Mm. And um, there's a different type of cracked granola here. Uh -huh. It's a cherry one. So oh, okay. That, got that on the bottom. <laughs> it is oh, uh, the the flaxseed one is really good. Yeah. And I got I got zoodles. They have these. They have those massive blueberries here again. No, they're like this big. <laughs> a little bit of edamame, a piece of butternut squash that has cinnamon on it. it looks really good, and some of the cherry, cherry almond granola, just a little bit, and cinnamon. There's also arugula down in the bottom. I'm really loving arugula here lately. It's so good, but I can't eat it. At, I can't eat it at night. It keeps me up. Is your coffee drink? Did you taste um, it? It's good. Yeah. It's, it's nice just to change it up once. I'm gonna more. taste it. Yeah, you don't normally deviate. Oh, it's good. If you like, if you like milk in your coffee, you probably like that because it's. it's almond yeah, it has a kind of a strong almond milk taste, I guess. What it's pretty good. Did you get Americano? I just got an Americano. How yeah. is it? It's pretty good. Yeah. We have we have a non-vegan amidst us. This innocent turkey was slaughtered while we were away. And he now has one eye and is missing a, a limb. And there's our sus the, there's the uh, suspect in question. Abby Bo, what did you do to my kindergarten magnet? We've had that for many years. He took it out of the storage bin? No, it was here. See, I set this down here. Oh. He, he's so fast. Oh, David. David is good at selling. 
I don't eat beef, chicken, pork. Well, I guess I'd eat a veggie edamame pot sticker, but. You see, David on QVC, you'll never see him wear his rings or wear long plastic fingernails to prepare food. I have a if you're gonna David if you're gonna sell food or recipes or try and entice people to make your food, not with the not with the E. coli talons or the uh, the uh, staff rings. And happy start to Hanukkah for those of you who celebrate Hanukkah. We got our stickers here in my Erin Condren planner. I'm just filling in. Filling in my week coming up. But my mom and I are gonna go take Tybee for a little walk and I just reapplied some of this Beat the Sun sunscreen. This sunscreen, um, you've been using it also, haven't you? Yes, I like it quite You like yet. it. Um, it's nice and it goes on very nicely. You were saying you felt it was comparable to the Hotelabo UV White yes, Perfect Gel? Yes, that's just my opinion, but I do feel that. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people ask questions about the alcohol content in um, in these types in these sunscreens. Like this is this is the uh, Korean sunscreen. It has alcohol in it, and the Hotelabo one um, has alcohol in it. And like I said this morning, you know, alcohol can be drying in skincare products. People with rosacea really can oftentimes find it stings uh, and can be a little bit irritating. But as far as barrier disruption, it is far far less offensive than than soap. Uh, soap with its detergents actually actually you know disrupts cell membranes, whereas alcohol largely is drying um, in large quantities. In these sunscreens, it's added it's added to protect you know for the stability of the of the chemical filters in these sunscreens. So it's low concentration. Still can still can sting for people with sensitive skin, but they go on really nicely with no cast. So that's what's going on. I don't know. Well, hey guys, what's up? I am back home and just got out of the shower. Um, stocking stuffer idea for you guys who are in the market for one or want to get something for yourself. Uh, this is a longtime favorite of mine and I haven't talked about it in, in a long, long, long time on my channel. It is the Neutrogena Fragrance Free Norwegian Formula Hand Cream. I always used this before CeraVe came out with their healing ointment. I always used it um, on my hands and uh, it is a nice, wonderful emollient. They make a foot cream, I think it's identical, uh, and uh, just maybe a slightly bigger tube. It's actually probably more uh, more economical to buy, buy one over the other. I haven't price compared them, but the nice thing about this is while it's pretty, uh, um, thick emollient occlusive like the CeraVe healing ointment, it, for whatever reason, the way that it's formulated, it does not leave greasy residua behind it. It, um, like for example, your fingertips aren't, aren't super greasy for a prolonged period of time. It seems to absorb a little bit better than, than like Vaseline, than Aquaphor. And it's great to just keep with you in the car. You know, I, I tell you not to leave skincare in the car. So keep with you in your purse, take with you in the car and continue to reapply on the hands throughout the day. It really will protect your hands nicely uh, from cracking and, and dry skin. No fragrance, no, you know, common irritating ingredients. Really wonderful. It doesn't leave that residue behind. Absorbs in really nicely. It's something that you actually enjoy putting on, um, and it it imparts good moisture, good hydration to the skin for a prolonged period of time. So it's not the kind of thing that you have to keep using and keep using and keep using because it, it is ineffective. Kind of like kind of like oils. Oils are just emollients, so they make the skin feel soft and supple, supple, but they don't really lock in moisture and hydration and prevent transepidermal water loss. So with oils, you're kind of having to keep reapplying them and reapplying them over and over again. They don't really lock in, they don't really provide any kind of occlusive component to seal in transepidermal water loss. This is really nice um, and I strongly recommend it. It's a great gift for anyone. I've I've never tried putting this on my lips. I just got this. I just bought it um, 
recently because uh, I wanted to start talking about it again because I kind of forgot about it. Um, they make one for the feet, but they also make a lip balm that is fragrance free. I've never tried that, but I, I like to give it a whirl. And then they make um, Norwe this Norwegian subset of, of Neutrogena. They also have a body, a body moisturizing body wrap. It comes in like a red, a red big bottle like this. That is more of a, a lotion. It's not, it's not the same, it's not the same as this. Whereas the foot cream, I'm pretty sure is kind of the same as this. Uh, the body lotion, the moisture wrap, I think it's called moisture wrap, the Norwegian moisture wrap, something like that. That is, that is not as occlusive as this. So no, that's, that's not a more economical dupe for this if you're wondering that. But long story short, I love this. It makes a great stocking stuffer, a great gift. Um, it's just wonderful. It's, it's pretty affordable and also very good on the elbows. The elbows are another area of the body this, this time of year in particular. They can get so dry and cracked and everything, and this is really easy. Likewise, on the knees, really good. And around your around your ankles, that is another area where I am really bad about putting moisturizer around my ankles. I'm great about putting um, ointments on the bottom of my feet and kind of the tops of my toes, but I <laughs> suck at putting moisturizers around my ankles. Um, so this is really good, you know, like on your, um, some of the bones around your ankles, they, you kind of rub together sometimes to get dry with, with walking, running, um, and you can kind of get a little patch of dry skin down there. This, this is really good for helping that. I strongly recommend it. Anyways, guys, I'm going to conclude the vlog here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.